Hello everyone, today I'm gonna show you uh, an abdominal perineal resection for rectal cancer. Okay, and uh, this is, is a complete surgery without cuts or uh, addition. So it will be a long video of one hour and 40 minutes, but I can explore uh, details, many details of the surgery. Uh, so this is a male patient with uh, this uh, distal rectum cancer and uh, we performed a total new adjuvant treatment and it had a good response but not a complete response so we follow up this patient for six to seven months and as the tumor did not show a complete response despite this good response we decided to perform the surgery based on the existing disease so we start the surgery with a umbilical incision and a very needle insertion where we do the pneumoperitoneum after we insert a 12 millimeter choker on uh, the right flank close to the uh, anterior superior iliac spine okay we go in this region because we want to reach the distal rectum so this stroker cannot be too too high it should be low and more medially okay so we can reach with our instruments the distal rectum so in the beginning of the surgery we have some uh, uh, and uh, so we place four more trokers the uh, left hand troker of the surgeon it is on the right flank so the surgeon uh, perform the surgery on the right side of the patient with these both trockers that we just see a 12 millimeters and a 5 millimeters one after that we are going to introduce two more trockers uh, they're in the same spots but on the left flank so we are going to uh, introduce this other choker Notice here that the choker was inserted by the assist assistant in a wrong manner. First, it reached some muscle. Uh, we retract the the choker to see if there is some bleeding, actively bleeding, on the epigastric uh, artery, inferior epigastric artery, but. Uh, we wait a little bit and we notice that no, it's uh, probably a muscle bleeding or a small vessel that was uh, reached by the, the choker. But uh, despite this, uh, it all, it, this choker also had a memory because it was pointed to cranially. So it's not a good choker and the assistant will now have a little more difficult because he will make uh, more uh, more uh, strength you make more more movement and to to keep it pointing uh, to the surgical area so 
uh, not a good chocolate, but it will not uh, uh, interfere in the quality of the surgery. Introduce the uh, last stroker on the right flank, and we are going to perform the surgery. So this surgery, uh, we have to go abdominally close to the the pelvic floor and the levatory muscle. We are not uh, making here a extra levatory uh, uh, dissection like uh, home uh, described okay this is uh, uh, abdominal perineal resect but we will keep the cox must uh, the cox bone and we will lift laterally the the specimen is cylindrical you are going to see the 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 specimen in the end of the video but it's not a classical extra levatory uh, abdominal perineal resection. So, okay, so we're positioning the patient. So, we notice that the uh, bowel is uh, coming cranially, and because we are doing a uh, trend in Lindbergh, and we are positioned to have a, a lateral movement of the, the surgical uh, table. Here we are trying, we had uh, some difficulties with the monopolar, uh, I was checking the monopolar but not working, and okay, uh, so we I decided to do it uh, with the scissor, the scissor is not, uh, it's not with the perfect cut, uh, it's not like a Japanese sword but it can uh, do its job okay so you're just checking it first we're trying to so uh, here i the, the i like this video because all the troubles we have 
in surgery, so a real scenario. Uh, we changed the, 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 the scissor. Uh, we are making some adjustment in the cables, but still not working. And we decide to go for the surgery because we I, we spent a lot of time here uh, and nothing happens with the monopolar while the engineers start to do just this. So now that we not <laughs> we don't have the monopolar and it's been uh, uh, seen to correct, we start the liberation of these attachments. So I like the, the scissor because it's precise, we can uh, keep it uh, really really with precision, we uh, cut the disadherence, uh, try not to cut the peritoneal, the parietal peritoneal, or, or I already see a little uh, hole there, but no troubles at all when we go close to the this um, uh, appendicular uh, peoples here that was in the abdominal wall we were cutting it performing the, the surgery now we move cranially on the parietal gutter and the toad not it's not the toad spice it's just uh, adherence okay so we are not in, uh, coming for for the left column who is uh, who will need further the mobilization of it So now we could add the monopolar energy to the scissor. So we can go and notice that the scissor has not the perfect, not sharp enough, but uh, we can not use perfectly the, the tip of the, the, the scissor, but we have to do like a more, use the middle of it because it's, uh, it is it's not as sharp as I would like to be but okay no problem at all this is sometimes our reality to perform this kind of surgery so we can use the the monopolar energy to to suppress it so this 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 quality of the surgery. So okay, the this, the 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 scissor. So now we are finishing the those attachments of the sigmoid colon. When we are and why we are doing it, because we want a good exposition of the transition that we will give it to our assistant. So uh, I want 
to liberate, to make this area more uh, move, move, to make more movements and more easy movements. So we can uh, make a better exposition to the inferior mesenteric artery and superior rectal artery. So notice how the, the rectum can come now from the pelvis. Uh, and he it's a male pelvis, as I said. Okay. Uh, but this patient is a good patient, is not fat. Uh, so he... He is a good case, not a difficult one. So now uh, I, I show the, where the system goes with his uh, instrument and grab the, the sigmoid column. So he will grab just where I pointed, or he will try to do it at least a little bit more for the left. Okay, better now, perfect. So now the second hand of the assistant will present the mesentery of the sigmoid column. So first instrument is on the transition of the of the sigmoid and rectum and the other one grabs the mesentery so it not keeps falling in front of me. Uh, we adjust the the small bowels, we can see, as I said, is a good patient with a good anatomy. The right ureter crossing the iliac artery, you put the external iliac artery here, the common iliac right artery. So there is a not a perfect one, the, 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 the instrument of the system was pushing too, too much to, to the lateral, so I made a readjustment towards uh, me the, the, and so I can expose a little better. So we can see the impression of the superior rectum. I go just below of it, opening the peritoneum. So now the surgery started, okay? Uh, I like to perform it uh, in, a, in this fashion, in this way. I go close and, and open this peritoneum make some adjustment. I will adjust uh, one of my, my colleagues now. Okay, back to the surgery. I change the, the, the scissor to the hook because the, this small bowel is, may, may come too close and uh, the hook uh, has a sm smaller area of the of uh, of energy than the scissors so I think the hook is safer to perform this dissection because uh, we don't uh, burn the other structures okay so we are going the dissection through the medial to lateral above the gerotus fascia and the retroperitoneum structures uh, we go this this we're going up uh, for the ligation of the superior rectal artery. I will not ligate the, the inferior mesenteric artery because this is a really distal. It's three centimeters to two centimeters. It's almost in the anal verge. It's a really distal one. We have to, to place the, the small bowel where we can do perform the surgery. So now I um, made those movements. And uh, we, we, we keep doing this dissection uh, uh, to the superior rectal artery, okay? So that all the dissection on the peritoneum. Sometimes we, uh, I like to really discriminate the inferior mesenteric artery or uh, really uh, discriminate all the branches, but in this one, I try to go close to the uh, to the rectal uh, superior rectal artery in in the first mom moment uh, and then ligated it. So we here we see the iliac artery of the left common iliac artery. So we we have to avoid to go too deep here 
because uh, there is the two axes. Uh, as I was discussing, uh, we see here the the rectal artery, but you cannot go too deep to uh, to make because we are going to make injuries in the nerves. So uh, we have to be really uh, have a really attention of that, okay? And we will uh, also reach the ureter. So the ureters, fascias, and the retroperitoneum is a really above of the iliac artery. So as we dissect it a little bit medially and we start with uh, make a better exposition now and we move the, all the assistants to perform it and we uh, start a little bit of the pelvic entry so we go in the Richard Hill's Beer Hill's plane the, all, there's all these hair angels and these bubbles, uh, white bubbles that we can follow our dissection so I like to go a little bit down uh, before ligating the, the artery so I like to use all the movements to go from left to, go, uh, to expose the rectum to always using the left hand in the, in the proper manner and always looking for the, the right plane always making the surgery it's that easier because if we start to do the some some troubles or difficulties in the beginning of the surgery uh, things can go wrong so I like to to have a good position to have a uh, so notice the uh, the assistant just uh, make a little injury in this column but it will uh, be removed I changed uh, his place now he will grab the the artery and the mesentery to make a better position and I show where the other assistant will grab it. his hand to a little bit above it so, uh, above. sometimes they don't go uh, uh, actually where it should be but we can also manage that easily. Well, we proceed the surgery. Okay, uh, we proceed the surgery, and we will now ligate the artery in its origin and the rectal artery. So we will expose all all the vein, the inferior mesenteric vein, so we can see that the inferior mesenteric vein up there okay where we everybody seeing it and now we are going to the artery okay so we're going to dissect it we go step by step up to the artery okay so notice now that we find or just found the artery that's of the vein on the left and superior and the artery is on the right on the right the camera is not really it's a little far from the perfect but We can do the the surgery. So this is the dissection. I decided not to edit this video to to make a different video from the other that I was exposing. This is one. This is good because we can see the more movements of the surgery. Real time. So there is this little branch 
who sometimes follows the 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 mesen uh, inferior mesenteric artery and the right one so you see there yeah the artery just over there but this little branch here sometimes we, with this nerve sometimes we we manage it so I, I was in doubt that it could be uh, a vessel that w it would bleed if we use the monopolar so I use the bipolar just checking if it is working <laughs> yeah this yeah it was working and to check everything we check those insulin previous to the surgery but sometimes uh, in the right moment so see that this small vessel didn't uh, stop with this this maneuver the bleeding So I tried to grab it, but in the end uh, I, I stopped doing this small section and I went through the artery to just finish this thing and this small bleeding. I was trying to be more precise and with a small movement, but uh, as, as this uh, mesenter started to bleed this small vessel I decided to to ligate everything and then after ligate the artery that was below. So first I grab this small bleeding in the left hand I'm using now a clip and I will try to put it down where there is bleeding. So I check nope bleeding a little bit more distant so uh, so as it is a little bit I will separate this area to expose the, the artery so you can see that I like it the, the artery and I see that this is the rec rectal artery, so I will put another clip on the on the distal margin, and I try I will ligate it with the bipolar. Then I will remove that clip, uh, or I will try to stop those that bleeding because it's not the inferior mesenteric artery is the rectal artery inferior mesenteric artery is in my left hand put some gauze to check and see if everything is okay and we are doing uh, the right thing now I just dissect it below okay so we can now to ligate it a little more proximally so here you see now i can get all the artery and I put a clip and that's it okay everything is perfect now so we can proceed and continue our surgery without any any trouble perfectly so the inferior mesenteric vein is still here look we didn't ligate it we will ligate it but after when we are going to transect the mesentery to perform 
the colostomy, okay? And to state all the color, the left color. So here we found the, the, the right plane above the ureter and all the structures and the nerves. So I like to go now up to the flank, to the left flank. See some a little bit uh, lesions. I cut this mesentery and earth to gain more space so I can make a better exposition. Now that's better. And we are going to dissect it. Okay, so the iliac artery, the, ar the ureter, over there, now we can see the retroperitoneal structures. So we have this vision, we are really safe to continue with our dissection. And in that case, we will cross to the other side. Okay, so the right flank is the left hand, sorry. It's just over there, and all the retroperitoneal structures are intact, okay, intact. Perfect. So we... That's it. So now, as we... We go to the left, from the medial to the lateral dissection. Here, the cross. Use it. I use it to clean this, the little mess that happened previously. I like to check the ureter sometimes, so this is the, the, periton, the heteroperitoneum fascia. So if I expose there, I can see the ureter. Okay, but usually we don't care much if we, so there, there it is, but I, I just want to show it, so look, there it is, okay, but usually we don't need to, to show the, the ureter, you, we know that the, the heteroperitoneum is intact. Perfect. So now we have a clean area of the surgery. And we go to make this left column to mobilize it because we're going to resect uh, the sigmoid and rectum column to perform the, the abdominal part of the surgery. So we go with the with this section. We can see the the, the flank, the parietal peritoneum. To go right on the toe fascia, performing the this section to uh, bottom up. We can see. The, the plane and we go with this monopolar energy or we can use also the the bi advanced bipolar energy that is a great instrument but anyway it, it doesn't matter uh, which one you use but the way you perform the surgery surgery is a little bit different the way you move the um, the uh, anatomical landmarks or or the presentation but uh, honestly uh, I like this sharp instruments okay perfect so going up going up going up okay a little bleeding on the wall abdominal wall and the, this is rectoperitoneal vessels we can see the difference between them and the mesentery vessels. It's 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 they are different. Okay. 
Perfect. So uh, now we will communicate that first region that we were performing the surgery where the, the artery is. And then we will enter the pelvis. So we're doing a little bit more mobilization of the left column. We're waiting the assistant, waiting, waiting. Okay, now we did it. Well, uh, so now we move to the pelvic to perform the total mesorectal incision. So we see here the, the left column, uh, the ureter on the left uh, uh, wall, uh, abdominal wall. Uh, the assistant uh, grabs the, the ureter and uh, we manage the rectum to start the surgery so the second assistant uh, it will just make a little uh, traction on the this on the uh, upper rectum to the right or and we will uh, get this uh, exposition to start the left side um, total mesorectal excision so here we go with the we, with the hook hook to do the surgery so it's dissect this notice how we uh, push the rectum Lateral, we see the the flap, the peritoneal flap, uh, where uh, beyond there is the extra peritoneal rectum. So we go in the in the avascular plane, in the holy plane. As Richard Hill described, for this technique, we changed the presentation. The system now grabs the the peritoneum, as he ha as he has a little bit difficult. We try to manage and help that. Okay. Look, uh, look the sometimes the difficulties or in the surgery. Okay, and now we we continue the dissection to the total mesorectal excision. So we keep dissecting in the vascular plane all the way down, always making the the exposition and the presentation better with, uh, with gentle movements of the rectum so we go and we keep going distal 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 A 
as much as we can. So all the left side being dissected, we keep always the plane, we don't lose the plane, we don't go too lateral or too medial, we don't uh, hit the, we don't injure the mesorectum, okay? So we see how we, uh, we like to perform a, a large flap, a high flap. So we change the, the, now the exposition to expose the right side of the column. So the, the one, uh, the orientation where to the assistance to grab and expose our area of surgical procedure so we wait the the assistant to grab the area a little bit difficult but okay that's it so we keep going now we will go to the right side okay so we always keep the plane to avoid the hypogastric nerve injuries and ureter injuries and pelvic wall injuries okay so these dissections goes further so we sometimes grab the flap sometimes we grab the rectum itself but always following the right plane and uh, these dissections dissection goes now posterior posterior then it goes to the left. We want to avoid uh, parasitical movements. We want to keep the surgery as clean as possible with gentle movement, with the less movement possible. Look how we have to make the exposition and to avoid injury and to, per and to keep the right plane okay now we go right and posterior always following the vascular plane the mesorectal plane preserving the endopelvic fascia and the mesorectum so it's a clear surgery, clear this dissection, we go deep in the pelvis. Now we are going to make the peritoneal flap opening laterally and anteriorly. So the camera is a little far from the surgical area. In the robotic surgery, we are used and we get used to see closer and closer. So if you change from robotic to laparoscopic, uh, we will start to find that, uh, that the surgery is always far from you but because the way the, the platform, the robotic platform, uh, we are getting used to. And again, the assistant tried to grab the bladder peritoneum and it, and it, and it, uh, and it happened. <laughs> uh, so we push the rectum so the other assistant uh, keeps a little bit traction to avoid the rectum to uh, get in the pelvis and we will uh, perform the anterior opening of the peritoneal flap 
close to the seminal vesicles or the deferens duct. Then we will perform di this dissection and we will find the novellier fascia, uh, fascia and the prostate. So this anterior dissection we go we go close to the flap to avoid injuries, uh, nerve injuries and injuries to the to the uh, structures. Notice that there was a little uh, a little hole in the peritoneum because it was a little bit adherence and there is uh, we we had a previous radiotherapy. But notice how close it is with the urologic structures, and we uh, we just uh, manage that, and we go right on the right uh, perfect plane, and this hole it it is nothing. It is no it it this hole doesn't make any difference in the oncological resection because we are making this. A huge flap um, and high flap. So uh, from now, this is the anterior part of total mesorectal excision. Anterior part, you see this dissection following, 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 and following down. Okay. So we go, we proceed the anterior dissection. We enter the assistant instrument. We manage the orientation of the camera. It's a 30 degrees camera. It's only possible to see you because uh, we, we can move it and we see uh, the anterior face, the anterior area of the dissection, so that we keep going further, further. So uh, at this time, every centimeter is a, a much more difficult than in the entry of the pelvis of course everybody who performed this surgery knows this because the presentation the rectum uh, the neoperitoneum the fog uh, everything starts to really uh, uh, make troubles for the surgery you know so we may try to put the place the camera where the fog doesn't uh, doesn't go through it and to avoid cleaning the camera as much as possible So now we are reaching the uh, pelvic floor. We see the final attachments of the mesorectum uh, and uh, white uh, collar. See, and uh, we enter a little bit in the fascia. We're going there. I'm, where I'm showing here. We're going to cut through this. Uh, if the tumor is uh, a higher or it invades this region we do not approach this laparoscopic we uh, avoid dissecting too uh, caudally because we want to to resect it uh, from the perineal approach okay but this tumor was a really low tumor and the invasion was in the external uh, sphincter uh, so we can uh, go down a little bit uh, more and further than the if the, the invasion 
or the tumor was invading the, the pelvic floor or the levatory muscle uh, higher. So this is kind of, uh, we, we, we individualize uh, some, some kinds of, of uh, a perineal resection. Sometimes we go uh, an extra elevatory with a patient uh, in a supine position uh, with a major resection of uh, bones and, and, and sacrum as the, the cox. But uh, in this case, uh, the thing is that the tumor was really distal and it was uh, mostly in the canal anal. Okay, so we are going to the right side now. Uh, notice the dissection, always in the mesorectum plane. Uh, we see uh, now that we, uh, we decided to change the instrument to perform this this uh, hemostasia uh, to avoid a little bleeding in the distal uh, region because it not that it uh, it's difficult to control it but the thing is that everything that happens in this uh, region we have a little bit difficult to manage because of the space of the Neuroperitoneum of the uh, the temperature that keeps uh, making trouble and uh, uh, with the optics. So uh, in this point, uh, we are going to keep the dissection through the 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 pelvic floor. So now again. A little bit uh, changing the exposition, where we we show our assistants where they can help us, and we will do the when we will continue the rice dissection. So notice how we can uh, with um, two or three movements just have a good. Uh, exposition and we start the dissection again uh, with uh, really the, uh, tranquility but sometimes it happens the the bowel and the sigmoid uh, we uh, that that touch the the camera and we need to to clean it again and again and this this those things maybe slow your surgical uh, approach so we you must avoid this kind of interruption you must avoid it uh, because it will really make your surgery uh, harder and it, there is no need to do it because the surgery itself has it's uh, really difficult but uh, so everyone should be really attention and should be uh, really conscious of the movement to to the surgery uh, because we want that the difficulties it's it's only on the surgical thing not on the personal thing so if the tumor is big if the patient is difficult if the uh, technique is it's it's a, a complex technique so Let's stay focused on that difficult and not on our own difficult, okay? And so we are going to dissect it uh, up to the right pelvic floor. So again, uh, we have the, to manage uh, the opening of the trocars to uh, get the air, the hot air uh, out of the abdomen and sometimes the pneumoperitone uh, gets really low below six or four and it makes a little difficult more difficult to make the this dissection and as we are reaching the bottom uh, sometimes we change the instrument to uh, a bipolar uh, uh, advanced bipolar because we want to make uh, less uh, smoke okay
So as I said, now we changed the, the instrument. We are dissecting the anterior part of the rectum. Uh, now really close to the, uh, the prostate. Uh, and where we are going to finish this uh, area of dissection. So we went laterally. Uh, and now we are going uh, anteriorly. to make this dissections to the end of the area. So as, as I said, the tumor is not in this region already, it's a little bit uh, far from here, and this is the oncological resection of the mesorectum for this really uh, low rect rectum. and. It had. It was a patient with a good response also. So it was. It is. It made uh, this surgery easier because the most. Uh, what makes it most difficult is the size of the tumor, and if it's really distal or it has invasion on the lateral wall. Because if it has this invasion in the lateral wall, we need to enter in the lateral wall, abdominally sometimes, in the iliac area and it makes a little harder the, di the surgery.
So now we are finishing the posterior <coughs> area of the dissection. We used uh, the hook. As I said, uh, <coughs> notice that uh, we are uh, uh, far away from the uh, uh, surgical area because of the fog and the smoke that produce with the heat. And uh, we decided to change the material because we want to get a little closer to the area of the dissection to see to have a better view and to end this dissection and go to the perineal part of the surgery. So now notice how we uh, are always cleaning the camera. It is the most important that the assistant is with you in the surgery uh, because uh, he is your eyes, you know, it's not a robotic surgery. Uh, so the assistant must be with you in the surgery. And we will now transect the mesosigmoid and up to the uh, left column, notice the inferior mesenteric vein that uh, we discussed early and dissected early. Now we're gonna ligate it, it on the uh, area that we are going to resect up to the uh, column. So now we're dissecting it, okay? Notice we now we are ligating the inferior mesenteric vein and we are going to we're going up no up to the column okay and we're gonna transect it with a, uh, uh, a stapler and then we are gonna uh, confect and make a colostomy on the left flank okay we I'll, uh, we mark previous to the surgery, the best area in the patient's abdomen. Sometimes we make a little change if patients are obese or, uh, or has some uh, anatomical questions of, uh, because we want that colostomy to be really good because it's a terminal and definitive one. So we try to put in the best place possible to avoid uh, uh, prolapse, hernias, and to make it easy to the patient uh, take care of it, make their make their changes of the of the bags of the colostomy bags. Okay, and uh, now we are re we reach the column. You see the uh, the dissection coming up to the column and we will perform the transaction.
transaction now being made a, a good lymphadenectomy lymph node resection good area of it uh, we see uh, we notice that the tumor was really distal so we could go along the dissection to facilitate the, the perineal part we we'll see how the perineal part is going to be now okay so stay tuned and you can see now we the perineal part so now we are going to check the mobilization of this colon if it is needed we do a little more so yes it is it is we we needed to do it a little more mobilization okay
we insert the train uh, we, we insert it usually in total metrorector decisions we insert it in the left uh, flank but in this case the patient is going to be with a colostomy in the left hand so uh, we change it to the right uh, flank you see now that we change the position not to get too close to the colostomy area it is possible but uh, in this case we prefer to put in this right, right side okay and now we finish the abdominal part of the surgery so let's go to the perineal area uh, I like to start the surgery with the closure of the anus to avoid spillage or uh, the f uh, fecal, uh, fecal uh, debris or uh, to the, this area to avoid contamination. So I'll make a, a really simple uh, closure of this region, just performing a continuous suture. You can do it in a, a purse suturing way, any way, any way you want. So this is just to avoid in uh, the contact with the internal area of the anus with the area where we will operate okay so yes just two knots just because we it's a really as i said simple thing let's go and uh, now we are, are checking the the areas where we are going to resect to perform the 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 perineal resection so the uh, we go in the perineal body we uh, between the uh, the of course the prostate and the, and the external sphincter of the canal now and laterally use the uh, ischial tuberosities and in the in the uh, posterior part it's the cox okay so those are the landmarks that I use for this resection and we go the opening of the this area since we are not gonna do any any um, uh, of course anastomosis in the area or or we can cut it direct it with the monopolar so we make a little hemostasia now we are doing this all the circumferential and cylindrical aspect so it looks like a uh, a water drop the 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 anal scheme. We prefer to close this wound with uh, a plastic surgery, a V Y uh, uh, plastic surgery, a gluteal fold after the complete resection we perform a unilateral gluteal fold uh, in a VY shape uh, plastic surgery okay and at that time the after the resection this the um, plastic surgeon comes and and do the 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 closing of this 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 area this wound it takes a little bit of one hour more of the surgeon like uh, of the surgery one hour and a half to close this wound but we notice that is a, a really better way so now we are dissect dissecting 
the subcutaneous tissue where we find the uh, sometimes they put the in the artery and nerves but usually we transected it because uh, we want to go up to the the muscles that uh, are in the diaphragm floor and elevatory uh, muscles so the anterior region and as we are getting on the deep of the area we are going to use some valves and doyans to help us now now our Richardson instrument that we placed now we just cut a, a artery look there the pudendal I'm trying to show you or some um, uh, uh, branch of it or any branch later branch of it so we're doing all this dissection always going laterally because we want to make uh, resection really really this uh, lateral to avoid any any uh, resection or our circumferential margin uh, that is compromised by the tumor. So we go anterior. So this is the perineal body that we are moving, uh, that we are transecting the muscles. See that we manage to stay always in the in the right plane, right area. To avoid excessive bleedings, we're going posterior now. We change the instrument to help us to have a better view. It's a doya now. Uh, those alleys will be removed because we see now they are just making some uh, weight and in about minutes we're gonna take them off so this dissection posterior goes up to the uh, cox bone and we will be entering in the cavity right now so notice the entrance of the cavity now uh, uh, we put our assistants to already check because there are always some uh, learning surgeons and young surgeons with us we stimulate them to understand all the steps of the surgery. Yes, let's continue the surgery now. We're going we're going to start the transaction of the muscle itself, the levatory muscle and the pelvic diaphragm that surrounds the canal now and rectum so we no notice that uh, in male patients the most difficult area is the anterior and I like to uh, take the anterior part uh, in the last moment because we need to avoid injuries in the prostata and mostly in the urethra so this is extremely important and what I like to do is to um, do it half cylindrical 
and uh, and we invert the specimen and then we finish the anterior part so now I'm going to the left side of the patient and right side of the surgeon to do the excision of the muscles we are already in the abdominal cavity sometimes we need a mixer or a bigger instrument to to reach the muscularis area but uh, if we manage a good presentation and a good orientation it is possible to make a really lateral resection with uh, some hand maneuvers So everything is going smoothly and calm. And we now are going up, up to the anterior area. I couldn't next videos I'll try to show you a little closer because it uh, there we need the space for the surgeons to to perform it but we can follow the surgery it's just uh, for purpose of, of education and to share some uh, points and tricky points and some opinions of all colleagues in, in the world. So now we are going to avert this specimen. Look here. I'm inverting it. So the mesorectum is quite beautiful we have to take care of in this area not to damage the mesorectum so it's a smooth traction to to avoid this and since now everything is detached uh, unless the anterior area we're going to dissect it from the prostata and the perineal body uh, this this is specimen the last part of the surgery so in a couple more of minutes we will finish the surgery just go into the in the right spot of the dissection area We have to make some light adjustments. We can use the aspirator to help us if to make suction of the air and uh, to the fog and then the smoke and also small bleedings or major if ha it happens. But in this case. We're just managing to finish the dissection. So the last part of the this the the attachments of the surgery on the anterior and left area of the patient
so we have uh, uh, we need to do a careful dissection always checking if you are going to the in, in the right direction as I said we do not we, we, we must not enter in the rectum because we will perforate the tumor and spread it and we are not and we must avoid the injuries of the so this is the final aspect of the surgery so we pass it to the table and we will now check a little bit of uh, hemostasia So we use the cautery, uh, the monopolar cautery, to uh, stop uh, small bleedings. But in the prostate region, uh, I'd rather use uh, some stitches to interrupt the the small bleedings because it will uh, stop probably. Uh, just with a little bit compression but uh, as we are going to make a plastic surgery we like to um, uh, to to we like when this the plastic surgeon comes uh, there is no no bleeding at all no nothing mm -hmm. left to uh, to him and he just uh, perform his his uh, plastic approach. So now we uh, um, we are performing those stitches to stop the small bleeding in the prostate area in the lateral wall. So perfecto. Uh, it's really uh, it it will be uh, the end of the the surgery now. We are coming to the end of the surgery. We're going to place another stitch and then uh, the larger gauzes 
and we're going to finish the, the surgery. So I hope you enjoyed the, this kind of video uh, with the complete surgery that we can uh, talk uh, a lot more from the different points and different uh, things that truly happen in a real surgery. It's a long video, but uh, it would be interesting that you guys uh, should share your experience and and interested or ask questions and be in touch and wait for the other vid more videos that we will release uh, every week okay so now everything is done all the area is resected okay and we will put this uh, this uh, larger gauze make uh, uh, close this wound with the plastic surgery here is a hemostatic agent okay and it even get <coughs> it even changed the, the color or, or uh, there is no bleeding at all so surgery finished uh, we're going to check the specimen now so after this video I'm gonna show you the specimen that's it so this is the anterior aspect of the specimen and this is the posterior aspect of the specimen thank you very much